are good to go. It's like the third time. The third time's a charm trying to make this video. Just uh, so excited. 2021 Mach 1. All the information, most of it is out, and we're going to talk about it coming up right up. All right, here we go. 2021 Mach 1. 2020. 21 Mach 1. Say that five times fast. Bet you can't do it. I'm excited about this car. This thing looks like a GT350 with a couple of 500 parts here and there, right? But the performance. Yeah, before we get too carried away, please let me know what you think about all this. Definitely 100% comment down below your thoughts on this new Mach 1. Let's get one thing straight first before we go any further. So there was a lot of rumor speculation that this thing was gonna have 525 horsepower and possibly a dual clutch transmission, the same one out of the GT500 with the 5.0 that we have now, the Gen 3 naturally aspirated GT. Well, it's not true at all. None of that's true, it's just not true. 480 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque. That's all right, right? Essentially what they're doing is kind of like the bullet. They're taking the 350 manifold, putting it on top of the engine, and then boom, got an extra 20 horsepower. Uh, helps to rev a little higher, makes a little bit more peak linear horsepower, if you will, and I am not complaining whatsoever. More power is more power, right? I am that crazy lunatic that would take a GT350 and for whatever reason, 10 already swap it, auto swap it in some way so you have the high rev band, all the extra horsepower, and you can still go in a straight line. I kind of take that back though, because let's, I drive a twin turbo car. Same turbo kit on a automatic versus a manual, totally different car. And I will argue that the manual is more fun to drive. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about boosting anything yet, although that is gonna come in this topic. This conversation that we're gonna have. Where to begin, where to begin? There's so much to discuss without making this a crazy boring video, so let's go. If you ever wanted, for whatever reason, an automatic GT350. Don't know why you would, unless you're that fool like me. But one thing that we can probably all agree on is that everybody wants a better transmission in their Mustang GT, aside from the MT82 that's just, you know, it's, uh, uh, just nobody likes it. It's a garbage transmission. We've had it for too long. Well, finally, the 3160 from the GT350 is going to make its way into a platform with a Coyote 5.0 Mach 1. Yes. Thank you, Ford. Yes. Let's do it. Let's go fast. Yes. So, yes, MT82 is going away. 3160 is going to replace it. You can basically have a GT350 light because that's kind of what the Mach 1 is going to be heavy on suspension. You can do things on the track like this, go around in circles and have a lot of fun, have a blast. And you can do it now with an automatic. And Ford's got you covered when it comes to coolers. There's coolers all over this thing. It's basically a GT350, right? It's the shell, it's the suspension, it's all of it. And then they just swapped the motor and they put a Coyote in it and uh, gave it 480 horsepower. Not complaining, not one little bit, especially when it's probably gonna live somewhere a little north of $50,000 as far as MSRP. Now there's also gonna be handling packages, right? So you're gonna have a handling package that will increase downforce. What is my car doing? It's dying. Why is my car dying? Now additional 150 pounds of downforce over the performance package level one that we have now. That's if you get the handling package. Um, if you go without, I think it's like 10% or 20% or something, it's still an improvement, but there's lots of different ways that they've come to make this happen, right? So they give it an aggressive look. Uh, that front splitter comes out more. They basically give you the new 2019 GT350 spoiler with the gurney flap, same one that can be found on the base GT500. Looks good, love it wouldn't change a thing. Maybe a little bit more calibration with the magnetic ride, some stuff here and there or whatever to give you that handling package to, to aid in just better overall handling of the vehicle. It's so crazy. We're gonna be able to take an auto GT basically and then track this thing and hopefully it won't overheat. Is the automatic gonna suffer from heat more so than the manual? Yeah, of course it is. But uh, man, I don't know how I would buy this car. I really don't because I love the 3160 transmission six speed from the 350 you don't have to modify it you don't have to put a short throw shifter in it nothing that thing is perfect great transmission you can probably all agree with me 
but the 10 hour radius is pretty good too. Kind of upset and happy. Well, I find myself in the middle. Why it doesn't have a seven speed dual clutch out of the 500. My car's wanting to kill itself. I don't know why. What was I talking about? I lost my train of thought. So the DCT, why does it not have a DCT? We all thought it was gonna come with a DCT. It'd been really cool if it came with a DCT. To a point, I guess. Um, the DCT can be tricky to get off the line at the drag strip. There's about a second of delay or something like that with the engagement. Now, great on the track. It does a lot of things very well. I've got a lot of seat time in a GT500 with the DCT. And um, I, again, am... <laughs> kind of really wanting a DCT in a Mustang GT, but I am still happy that the 10 already still is going to be the, uh, it's still gonna be a 10 already. The reason behind that is because, well, the 10 already is pretty much, you know, the, the king daddy on the drag strip. When you launch that thing, get out of the hole, it's gone. That's it, see you later, bye-bye. You can do the same thing with a built six speed automatic, sure. There's six already guys out there and they're uh, they're built and they do very well. But guess what? We're beyond that. 10 speed is the future, baby. You just got to move on. If you got to beat them, join them. You know what I mean? It's just the way that Ford wants to go ahead in the future. I am shocked. I really am shocked that there is not a DCT going to find its way into the Mach 1. Will that hold true for the future? I guess uh, in a couple of years, we'll remake this video and find out. Two bad transmissions, the best that Ford has with the Mustang, uh, will be available to this car. So I don't know how I would buy it. I honestly do. I, maybe I'll just take two. I'll buy one of each. Yeah, so where do we go from here? So the looks, I love the look. I love the styling cues. you got like reflective pinstripes around the decals. Looks good. The interior is modernized a little bit here and there just to make it a little bit more special. I really like the styling cues that Ford des decided to go with. It's basically a 350, very reminiscent of one, and uh, maybe a little bit of GT500 in there, and still a throwback to the original Mach 1 with the Fox headlights. Just like, the, remember the Boss 302, 2012 and 13 had? Kind of a nice throwback, a little piece of history added into this new modern design. I don't think there's a bad angle in the car. The wheels... Uh, you know, that's a personal preference thing. I like them. I probably wouldn't change them. Well, no. Oh, yeah, I probably would. But that's the cool thing about the Mach 1 too is if it was a GT350, if I owned one, I would be afraid to touch it. Are you going to take away from the value of it? Mm, yeah, probably. The limited production serial numbered car and I would be afraid to mess with it. But a Mach 1, to me, it's a GT with a bunch of 350 stuff. And all I can think about when I think of the new Mach 1 is boost. Yeah, GT350 handling, twin turbo, supercharger. On top of that, already proven Coyote V8. So you'll be able to do so and still take turns. Best of both worlds. This is a car, the Mach 1 for me, thinking about this is like, you know, having your cake and being able to eat it too. Um, um, um. I would definitely probably buy the handling package uh, just because it looks good but it's also gonna perform. There's oil coolers all over the car, additional cooling, even little things like the belly pan underneath the GT350, um, say 350, the Mach 1. It's actually extended about 20, 20, uh, yeah, I was right. It was 20 inches, 20 inches. Uh, it's going to extend further back. So you have more aerodynamics, both above, around, and underneath of the car. So going to make it a little bit more streamlined going through the air, going fast. But I really see the Mach 1 as a do-it-all kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's kind of the, the Mustang of my dreams so far. Uh, it's not boosted, but that can always be addressed in the aftermarket because guess what? Still Coyote 5.0. Supposedly it's got a little bit of GT350 stuff in there too. So a lot of that is still going to be coming out, uh, future details. And if, I wonder if it probably just has the 350 heads on top of it. I would imagine probably so. Internal? I, I don't know what they're doing with the bottom end yet. Are the pistons different? Uh, the rotating assembly. It's, I think it's still the regular GT. If they port the heads on, anyway, you understand what I'm saying. More power, more airflow, more performance, all good things. I love it. Oh man, I don't know how I'd buy this car. 
I'm excited though. What else can we talk about Mach 1? Big brakes. That goes along with the suspension. You got to be able to slow the car down. Updating styling cues all around. We've got that. Um, performance, we've talked about that. Yeah, looks. Uh, looks great. Looks killer. Love it. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else can we talk about with the 2021 Mach 1? Well, I guess uh, we'll do this video again whenever they reach the dealerships. Because I'm going to drive one. I'm going to drive that sh out of that thing now here's the thing too we look at these pictures i see regular seats but will there be a recaro option i would imagine so with the handling package i would bet your butt that there's going to be a different seat than your regular standard one so ford does what ford does and it's probably recaro the same style that's uh used and abused so far for the past i don't know 10 years and that's all right because they work well um i'm excited about the car i hope that you guys are too i'm gonna pretty much wrap up this video key takeaways here a gt engine and a gt350 with the 3160 six speed awesome manual transmission or or dare i say the 10 speed automatic transmission take a gt350 and auto swap it well now you don't have to do that now you don't have to break the internet you can just go buy mach 1 and uh and to build upon the already great 5.0 liter that has been proven we're on the gen 3 now uh direct injection port injection it's great i like this car i'm excited to see one of the dealership here very very soon whenever they come out and then we'll do this video again uh up close in person test drive review all of that subscribe i'll see you guys next video be safe out there take care have a great day Thank mm -hmm. you.